The Book of Ruth, Chapter 1 It happened in the days when the judges judged that there was a famine in the land. A certain man of Bethlehem, Judah, went to sojourn in the country of Moab, he and his wife and his two sons. The name of the man was Elimelech, and the name of his wife, Naomi, and the name of his two sons, Malon and Chilion, Ephrathites of Bethlehem, Judah. They came into the country of Moab and continued there. Elimelech, Naomi's husband, died, and she was left and her two sons. They took them wives of the women of Moab. The name of the one was Orpah, and the name of the other Ruth, and they lived there about ten years. Malon and Chilion died, both of them, and the woman alone was left of her two children and of her husband. Then she arose with her daughters-in-law, that she might return from the country of Moab, for she had heard in the country of Moab how that the Lord had visited his people in giving them bread. She went forth out of the place where she was and her two daughters-in-law with her, and they went on the way to return to the land of Judah. Naomi said to her two daughters-in-law, Go, return each of you to her mother's house. The Lord deal kindly with you as you have dealt with the dead and with me. The Lord grant you that you may find rest, each of you in the house of her husband. Then she kissed them, and they lifted up their voice and wept. They said to her, No, but we will return with you to your people. Naomi said, Turn again, my daughters, why will you go with me? Have I yet sons in my womb that they may be your husbands? Turn again, my daughters, go your way, for I am too old to have a husband. If I should say I have hope, if I should even have a husband tonight and should also bear sons, would you therefore wait until they were grown? Would you therefore stay from having husbands? No, my daughters, for it grieves me much for your sakes, for the hand of the Lord has gone forth against me. They lifted up their voice and wept again, and Orpah kissed her mother-in-law, but Ruth joined with her. She said, Behold, your sister-in-law has gone back to her people and to her God. Return you after your sister-in-law. Ruth said, Don't entreat me to leave you and to return from following after you. For where you go, I will go, and where you lodge, I will lodge, and your people shall be my people, and your God, my God. Where you die, will I die, and there I will be buried. The Lord do so to me, and more also, if anything but death parts you and I. When she saw that she was steadfastly minded to go with her, she left off speaking to her. So they too went until they came to Bethlehem. It happened, when they were come to Bethlehem, that all the city was moved about them, and the woman said, Is this Naomi? She said to them, Don't call me Naomi, call me Mara, for the Almighty has dealt very bitterly with me. I went out full, and the Lord has brought me home again empty. Why do you call me Naomi, seeing the Lord has testified against me, and that the Almighty has afflicted me? So Naomi returned, and Ruth the Moabitess, her daughter-in-law, with her, who returned out of the country of Moab, and they came to Bethlehem in the beginning of the barley harvest. Chapter 2 Naomi had a kinsman of her husband's, a mighty man of wealth of the family of Elimelech, and his name was Boaz. Ruth the Moabitess said to Naomi, Let me now go to the field and glean among the ears of grain after him in whose sight I shall find favor. She said to her, Go, my daughter. She went and came and gleaned in the field after the reapers, and she happened to come to the portion of the field belonging to Boaz, who was of the family of Elimelech. Behold, Boaz came from Bethlehem and said to the reapers, The Lord be with you. They answered him, The Lord bless you. Then said Boaz to his servant who was set over the reapers, Whose young lady is this? The servant who was set over the reapers answered, It is the Moabite lady who came back with Naomi out of the country of Moab. She said, Please let me glean and gather after the reapers among the sheaves. So she came and has continued even from the morning until now, except that she stayed a little in the house. Then said Boaz to Ruth, Don't you hear, my daughter? Don't go to glean in another field, neither pass from here, but abide here fast by my maidens. Let your eyes be on the field that they reap, and go after them. Haven't I charged the young men that they shall not touch you? And when you are thirsty, go to the vessels, and drink of that which the young men have drawn. Then she fell on her face, and bowed herself to the ground, and said to him, Why have I found favor in your sight, that you should take knowledge of me, seeing I am a foreigner? Boaz answered her, 
It has fully been shown me all that you have done to your mother-in-law since the death of your husband, and how you have left your father and your mother and the land of your birth, and have come to a people that you didn't know before. The Lord will recompense your work, and a full reward will be given you of the Lord, the God of Israel, under whose wings you are come to take refuge. Then she said, Let me find favor in your sight, my Lord, because you have comforted me, and because you have spoken kindly to your handmaid, though I am not as one of your handmaidens. At mealtime Boaz said to her, Come here and eat of the bread, and dip your morsel in the vinegar. She sat beside the reapers, and they passed her parched grain, and she ate and was satisfied. When she was risen up again to glean, Boaz commanded his young men, saying, Let her glean even among the sheaves, and don't reproach her. Also pull out some for her from the bundles and leave it, and let her glean, and don't rebuke her. So she gleaned in the field until evening, and she beat out that which she had gleaned, and it was about an ephah of barley. She took it up and went into the city, and her mother-in-law saw what she had gleaned, and she brought forth and gave to her that which she had left after she was satisfied. Her mother-in-law said to her, Where have you gleaned today, and where have you worked? Blessed be he who did take knowledge of you. She had shown her mother-in-law with whom she had worked, and said, The man's name with whom I work today is Boaz. Naomi said to her daughter-in-law, Blessed be he of the Lord who has not left off his kindness to the living and to the dead. Naomi said to her, The man is a close relative to us, one of our near kinsmen. Ruth the Moabitess said, Yes, he said to me, You shall keep close by my young men until they have ended all my harvest. Naomi said to Ruth, her daughter-in-law, It is good, my daughter, that you go out with his maidens, and that they not let you go into any other field. So she kept close by the maidens of Boaz to glean to the end of the barley harvest and of wheat harvest, and she lived with her mother-in-law. Chapter 3 Naomi, her mother-in-law, said to her, My daughter, shall I not seek rest for you, that it may be well with you? Now isn't Boaz our kinsman with whose maidens you were? Behold, he winnows barley tonight in the threshing floor. Wash yourself, therefore, and anoint yourself, and put your clothing on, and go down to the threshing floor, but don't make yourself known to the man until he has finished eating and drinking. It shall be when he lies down that you shall mark the place where he shall lie, and you shall go in and uncover his feet and lay down, and he will tell you what you shall do. She said to her, All that you say I will do. She went down to the threshing floor and did according to all that her mother-in-law told her. When Boaz had eaten and drunk and his heart was merry, he went to lie down at the end of the heap of grain, and she came softly and uncovered his feet and laid herself down. It happened at midnight that the man was afraid and turned himself, and behold, a woman lay at his feet. He said, Who are you? She answered, I am Ruth, your handmaid. Spread therefore your skirt over your handmaid, for you are a near kinsman. He said, Blessed are you by the Lord, my daughter. You have shown more kindness in the latter end than at the beginning, inasmuch as you didn't follow the young men, whether poor or rich. Now, my daughter, don't be afraid. I will do to you all that you say, for all the city of my people does know that you are a worthy woman. Now it is true that I am a near kinsman. However, there is a kinsman nearer than I. Stay this night, and it shall be in the morning that if he will perform to you the part of a kinsman, well, let him do the kinsman's part. But if he will not do the part of a kinsman to you, then I will do the part of a kinsman to you as the Lord lives. Lie down now until the morning. She lay at his feet until the morning. She rose up before one could discern another, for he said, Let it not be known that the woman came to the threshing floor. He said, Bring the mantle that is on you and hold it, and she held it. And he measured six measures of barley and laid it on her, and he went into the city. When she came to her mother-in-law, she said, Who are you, my daughter? She told her all that the man had done to her. She said, These six measures of barley he gave me, for he said, Don't go empty to your mother-in-law. Then she said, Sit still, my daughter, until you know how the matter will fall out, for the man will not rest until he has finished the thing this day. Chapter 4 Now Boaz went up to the gate, and sat down there. And behold, the near kinsman of whom Boaz spoke came by, to whom he said, Ho, such a one! 
Turn aside, sit down here. He turned aside and sat down. He took ten men of the elders of the city and said, Sit down here, and they sat down. He said to the near kinsmen, Naomi, who has come back out of the country of Moab, is selling the parcel of land which was our brother Elimelech's. I thought to disclose it to you, saying, Buy it before those who sit here and before the elders of my people. If you will redeem it, redeem it. But if you will not redeem it, then tell me that I may know, for there is none to redeem it besides you, and I am after you. He said, I will redeem it. Then Boaz said, The day that you buy the field of the hand of Naomi, you must buy it also of Ruth the Moabitess, the wife of the dead, to raise up the name of the dead for his inheritance. The near kinsman said, I can't redeem it for myself, lest I mar my own inheritance. Take my right of redemption on you, for I can't redeem it. Now this was the custom in former time in Israel concerning redeeming and exchanging. To confirm all things, a man drew off his shoe and gave it to his neighbor, and this was the manner of attestation in Israel. So the near kinsman said to Boaz, Buy it for yourself. He drew off his shoe. Boaz said to the elders and to all the people, You are witnesses this day that I have bought all that was Elimelech's and all that was Chilion's and Malon's of the hand of Naomi. Moreover, Ruth the Moabitess, the wife of Malon, have I purchased to be my wife, to raise up the name of the dead on his inheritance, that the name of the dead not be cut off from among his brothers and from the gate of his place. You are witnesses this day. All the people who were in the gate and the elders said, We are witnesses. The Lord make the woman who has come into your house like Rachel and like Leah, which two built the house of Israel. And do you worthily in Ephrathah, and be famous in Bethlehem, and let your house be like the house of Perez, whom Tamar bore to Judah, of the seed of which the Lord shall give you of this young woman. So Boaz took Ruth, and she became his wife, and he went into her, and the Lord gave her conception, and she bore a son. The woman said to Naomi, Blessed be the Lord who has not left you this day without a near kinsman, and let his name be famous in Israel. He shall be to you a restorer of life, and sustain you in your old age. For your daughter-in-law, who loves you, who is better to you than seven sons, has borne him. Naomi took the child and laid it in her bosom, and became nurse to it. The women, her neighbors, gave it a name, saying, There is a son born to Naomi, and they named him Obed. He is the father of Jesse, the father of David. Now this is the history of the generations of Perez. Perez became the father of Hezron, and Hezron became the father of Ram, and Ram became the father of Amenadab, and Amenadab became the father of Nashon, and Nashon became the father of Salmon, and Salmon became the father of Boaz, and Boaz became the father of Obed, and Obed became the father of Jesse, and Jesse became the father of David.